Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 16 in our most excellent new and improved series of tutorials on the Arduino. I need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. Do you hear that ice in there? Straight, strong black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, none needed. It is refreshing and it is delicious. Get your coffee. Also need you to get out your eLego Super Starter Kit, the Uno R3 Project Kit. If you don't, what? You don't have one yet? Check the link down below. Click on the link, hook a brother up, buy it from there. And it's about 35 bucks. And this has a boatload of components and it will keep us busy for a long time. It's, uh, it's the components in this kit that I will be using in this tutorial. If you already have an Arduino and kind of have a box of, you know, box of parts that that will work equally well. Okay. What are we going to do today? We are going to learn more about for loops and in, uh, in uh, lesson number 15, we kind of introduced you to for loops and we sort of showed you how you could do something by blinking, a, you know, blinking LEDs and controlling them with for loops. But it was just the very, very basic kind of like simplest way that you could do a for loop. And so what I want to do today is I want to jump in and play around a little bit more with for loops and allow you to understand a little better those three parameters that go into creating a for loop. So let's jump right in and get started. I will need to switch you to a better view. Let's try this one. I think that will work. And then I will get out of your way. I think that's a pretty good one. Or do you like this one better? No, that shows a little bit of the mess on my desk. I think we'll go to this one. All right. So let's jump in and start coding here. And uh, I'm going to not so much use variables this time because I'm going to kind of just be putting numbers in the uh, for loop parameters so you'll see more specifically what uh, the effect of changing the numbers are. But I will need a counter. And uh, what do we use as a counter? I like to use J because an I looks too much like a 1 and that creates problems that are hard to debug sometimes. So I'm going to use J as my counter. <clears throat> I'm not going to really be doing anything with LEDs or pins. We're just going to be looking at for loops. So all I need to do in my void setup is start my serial monitor, serial.begin. And we're going to use the trusty old 9600 baud rate. And then we will come down here and we will write a for loop. So remember, it's four and then... We have an open parentheses and we put in the three parameters where we start and what our counter is. Well, our counter is J. Where do we want to start? J is equal to one. And then let's say that we're going to count to 10. So if we want it to go through the loop 10 times, we need to say J, keep looping as long as J is less than or equal to 10. So this will go through the loop 10 times. It will keep looping as long as J is less than or equal to 10. And then at the end of each loop, we need to say take J, take J and make it equal to J plus one. Close the parentheses. Ah, what did I do wrong? Hopefully you were screaming at me. You don't use a comma. It is a semicolon. That is a hard thing to remember, especially like if you know a lot of different programming language and you kind of forget the specifics of one versus another. Now we got to tell it to start the clause. And this is something that I sometimes hate. Now when I click enter, do you see how it automatically ended the clause for me here? And so then I'm thinking, well, I started the clause, I got to end it, and then I end up with an extra curly. But what we have to see is this curly goes with this one, that's the void loop clause, and then this curly goes with this one. And so whatever I put between this and this is what it will do when it loops. So let's just do uh, serial.println, and what do I want to print? Just print j, the counter, so we can see what it's doing as we loop. And then I always like to put a delay in, delay, 500. No, no, no. Set a variable. I will set a variable on that one. Int uh, delay time, and I'll set it to 500, just because we do need to be good about not putting constants down here. 
and that's going to be delay time. Okay. That looks pretty good. And then here outside, now once it exits the loop, I'm going to put one more print in here. I'll just say serial.println. Open close. Hopefully that'll work. And that should just print a blank line. Uh, I believe it will. If it won't, we'll put a couple of quote marks in there. Uh, so this will go through and it'll print what the counter is every time. And so just sit and think, what do you expect from this? All right. And then I will download this. Ah, what did we forget? We forgot to hold our breath. We forgot to hold our breath. Somebody didn't hold their breath. And also Jay needs a semicolon at the end of it. This time, please, everyone hold their breath as we compile. <sighs> Boom! It is going to like it. Okay. I think I need to scoot to a different view so you can see my serial monitor. I'll come up here to open the serial monitor. We click right here. And then let's see what it does. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A blank space. Boom. Okay, do you see that? We have a nice simple counter here where we are counting to ten. So the first time through the loop, J is one, we print one. Next time J is two, we print two. It keeps looping as long as J is less than or equal to 10. And each time through J is J plus one. What would happen, like a lot of times you would just maybe think, oh, well, J is equal to one print, uh, you know, keep looping as long as J is less than 10. If we did that, what do you think would happen? Let's see. five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. It only goes to nine. Why? Well, when J is 10, 10 is not less than 10. And so it exits the loop and then it comes down to the first command after the loop. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. Interesting. What if we wanted to count instead of, let me change that back because we really always want to just go less than or equal to the number of times that we want to blink. What if we wanted to count instead of from 1 to 10, what if we wanted to count from 5 to 10? How would we do that? Anybody? Okay. Hopefully somebody would recognize that you would just start at 5. So let's try that. Start at 5. What did I do wrong? Oh, it's right. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom! We got that. All right. What if we wanted to go from one? Let's say we're going to go from one to ten. I want you to print out the even numbers between one and ten. I want you to print out the even numbers between one and ten. Hmm. Should I start at one? Maybe not. Maybe I should start at two. Okay. And now instead of J is J plus one, J is J plus two. So first time through J is two. It goes through and then next time through J is four, six, eight. When it gets to 10, 10 is less than or equal to 10. It'll do 10. And then what will it do? It'll drop out. So let's look at that one and see what happens. Tension builds. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Boom! We got that one. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Boom! We got that one. Okay. So you see, usually we just want to go through from one to some number just straight through. But I want you to see that you can tailor this thing to do things. And a lot of times you might be writing a program that might need to get a little clever as you're doing the for loop. All right, now this time I want you to count backwards from 10. Backwards from 10. Pause the video and see if you can do it yourself. I want you to count backwards from 10 to one. Pause the video, see if you can do it yourself, then come back and I'll help you. I'll sit here and drink coffee while you're working on it. Okay. Hmm, did you get it? Maybe you had problems. I bet you couldn't figure it out. 
leave a comment down below and let me know whether you were able to figure it out without my help or not. Okay. So first of all, you know, probably if you want to count backwards from 10, you would start where? <coughs> 10. And then instead of j is equal to j plus 1, j is equal to j minus 1. But now instead of saying that you loop as long as j is less than or equal to 10, well, this would loop forever. It would just keep going and going and going. And so let's try that. This is the wrong way to do it, but let's see what happens if we do this. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Looks good. Oh, I think we got this. Whoa, stop, stop, stop. It goes on forever. It will never stop. Why? Because if you're counting down, j will always be less than or equal to 10. And so we want to count as long as j is what? Greater than or equal to where we want to stop, which is 1. Did you figure that out? Leave me a comment down below. One possibility would be, yeah, you figured it out just right off the bat. Second possibility would be after banging your head against the wall for several hours and pulling your hair out, you figured it out. Or you gave up and you folded up like a cheap lawn chair. I need you to be honest. How many of you folded up like a cheap lawn chair or ran from the room crying like a little child trying to figure this out? Okay, so let's try this one. As long as J is greater than or equal to 1, keep looping. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 10, 9. Boom, we got it. Oh, wow, I just knocked something off the table. Okay, so we got that. So you've got to think more broadly about how you, uh, how you do these things. Okay, you've got to think more broadly about how you do these things. This is where you start. You loop as long as this condition is true. You loop as long as this condition is true. And then this is what you do at the end of each pass. So let's go back to the more, uh, let's go back to the more traditional j is equal to j plus, uh, j is equal to j plus one. And then let's start at j equal one. And then let's say we will loop as long as j is less than or equal to 10. Okay, one of the things that happens a lot of times, like if you're not careful and uh, you, you, you know, you might say uh, start it, you, you would think of it as, as, as start when j is equal to 1, stop when j is equal to 10, and then j is equal to j plus 1. And you kind of, you kind of aren't thinking and you do that. And then let's see what happens. Okay, uh, that is indeed strange. Okay, so... <laughs> what is happening? This thing is just looping because when you say j equal 10, this is not a conditional. This is setting j equal to 10. So you say j equal 1 and then this sets j equal to 10 and then it just loops forever. So you've got to make sure that you do this right. You see, like if you saw that, that would be very, very conf confusing. So this is not this is setting j equal to 1 where you start, and this is saying loop as long as this is true. Well, when you say less than or equal to, that's setting it as a condition. If you just put an equal sign, you're setting j equal to 10. So you see little things like that. And, and since I teach engineering to high school students, I see these problems. And some of these problems, these little simple, silly little mistakes that you can make, can turn out to be very, very, very difficult to figure out what's going on. Look at that. Boom. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you learned a little bit more about for loops. I hope you'll leave a comment down below. Hope that you'll give me a thumbs up. Hope you'll think about subscribing to the channel. Share this with your friends. Let's get more people involved. Okay, this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.